Hey fellow tennis nerds, today we're going to talk about the head size. This makes a huge difference in how the racket plays. Obviously, with a bigger head size, you get more real estate to hit the ball, so you usually have a bigger sweet spot. You get a bit more power and stability from a bigger head size, but what suffers is the pinpoint control and the maneuverability because it's going to be a bit more sluggish through the air. While with a smaller head size you get a bit more precision, it's faster through the air, but you also need to be better at hitting the sweet spot over and over. Usually measure this in a square inches. It's actually the maximum racket that I've seen. It's a Gamma Big Baba. Uh, funny name, it's 139 square inches. So it's a huge racket, huge sweet spot, very easy to use obviously, but it takes a lot to swing. Uh, and then there's rackets such as the Prince Phantom 93P, which I really like. That's a 93 square inch racket with an 1820 string pattern. So quite tight, not that easy to use, but when you really hit out and you're feeling the ball well and you're moving well on the tennis court, this racket is going to perform brilliantly. So there are various different options and you can go really big head size, so-called oversized rackets. You could go the medium, which is usually mid plus rackets, or you could go smaller, which is mid rackets. So the mid rackets are usually 90 square inches up to 93. Uh, before they used to be like 85 to 93, but uh, the 85 square inch rackets have pretty much disappeared. There's one legend out there, the Pro Staff 85, that a lot of rec players still like. It was the one that Federer used, Sampras, Edberg but it's not really used anymore on the Pro Tour or uh, tournaments below the Pro Tour. You need a bit more real estate today in the modern game of tennis to be able to hit the tennis ball. So when you choose your head size, you need to keep a few things in mind. Uh, partly that's your level of play. If you're a really advanced player, you can think about a smaller head size, perhaps 95 square inch, which is a, which is a mid plus racket used by Many, many players on the Pro Tour, uh, the Potro, Djokovic, Murray, uh, it's, uh, it's one of the most popular head, size, head sizes on the Pro Tour, partly because they started using 95 when that was a really popular head size. Pro players are not really keen to change their racket, so that's really why they still play with the 95, it's a force of habit. You will see a lot of younger players coming up, they won't be using 95, they will be using 98, which is kind of the new norm for control-oriented rackets, or 100 square inches, which is used by Rafa, for example, and one of the older players on tour, and um, used by a lot of other players as well, Berrettini um, hits a big ball with a 100 square inch racket. So 98 to 100 square inch rackets are kind of the new norm, and uh, if you go above that, it becomes a bit more difficult to maneuver, uh, you have Serena, she's using a 104 square inch racket, that's extended length, so she has a lot of power in the racket as well as a lot of power in her shots. Uh, that fits her style, and, but you won't find oversized rackets on the men's tour uh, as much. Uh, Andre Agassi used a 107 square inch racket back in the days, but, he's, um, but he was a rarity and nowadays you won't see many oversized rackets. Usually the sweet spot is between 95 and 100, and I'll, the new 95 is, is the 98 square inch racket. And they, if you put the 95 and the 98 next to each other, you won't see that there's a huge difference in these square inches. So there's definitely a trend shift towards larger head sizes. The reason being that today's tennis is a lot faster, so you need more real estate to be able to hit the ball. So with more spin being generated through bigger swings and, and loopier swings, you're going to be a bit off center, a bit higher in the string bed, and uh, that's why you need a larger racket to kind of accommodate that playing style and the, the speed of tennis. So, the question about head sizes is who should use what? Not an easy answer, of course, because as I've been repeating over and over in my videos, a tennis racket is highly personal. What works for your game might not work for your friend, or what works for um, ATP tour player top 100 is not going to be maybe good for you. So, it depends a lot on your level. You need to really understand your level. But in general, I would say if you're a beginner to intermediate, I wouldn't go down to 95 square inches. I would look at 100 square inches to start with to get a bit more forgiveness from the string bed. And you see a lot of players actually going from these mid-size rackets to bigger head sizes just to give them a bit more uh, room for error, a bit more power so you can get more depth on your shots. 
and you don't have to hit them as cleanly as you would with a at 95 screen racket. Sometimes playing tennis is easier and with these more powerful rackets. That doesn't mean you should you should not overlook uh, stiffness and things that might affect your elbow. But when it comes to head size, if you're a beginner to intermediate player. I think you should look at 100 square inches, maybe try something slightly above that, but um, 100 square inches is a good one. If you like a bit more control, if you're able to generate a lot of power from your shots, I think 98 is a good option. 98 these days is um, precise enough. You can get, for example, a Prestige, uh, which is very controlled, a Blade, that's also very controlled oriented racket. And Gel makes some really nice K7 series that are 98 square inches as well. So. 98 is where you should look for a more control oriented frame and 100 or above is what you should look if you need a bit more help with power and forgiveness from the string bag. So uh, that's really what you need to keep in mind. Looking back, the history of tennis rackets and head sizes, I mean obviously they started with wood and um, kind of this head size, this is an Arthur, Arthur Ashe head competition 2 with boron flex, this is a lot of flex in the rack, it actually plays quite nice very small head size, very thin beam this one requires some skill to use it actually hits a really nice ball, it's one of my favorite oldies uh, to play with but it's not easy to use at all one guy that used mid-size rackets for a long time up until 2012 was our friend Roger who uses, used to use the 90 square inch Pro Staff 90 and um, he won a lot of slams with it then he moved in 2014 to a bigger head size to get more power and to avoid some off-center hits on his backhand when he was playing Rafa and guys that hit with a lot of topspin. He, he made his own racket mold together with Wilson called the Pro Staff RF97 Autograph and he's been having better results ever since because there was a time when he was struggling to generate enough power and handle spin to be able to finish points off and then I think he got even quicker with his service games and even faster to win points with his new racket. So the racket definitely matters. If you want help finding your ideal racket and string setup, you can pay for this service in the Tennis Nerd shop called Racket and String Advice. You fill in a form and you will get a personalized recommendation in an email and PDF file within three days. You can also find more content like this on the Tennis Nerd Patreon page. It's only $2 a month and you can cancel your subscription at any time. So really a no-brainer no if you're into Tennis Nerd content. Thanks for watching and have a nice day on the tennis court.